Hey guys, it's Aijing. My Lisa Elder Daughter finally arrived. I got all five palettes to review for you so you can decide whether you want to save or splurge your money. I also got the five new lipsticks, but that will be a different video because otherwise it'd be way too long. But a sneak peek, I am wearing sorcery on my lips. Obviously, if you watch my other videos on the Lisa Aldridge brand, you know that I actually own every single lipstick she's ever released and her lip glosses, including her Liquid Lyrics eyeshadows, I, ha I have her foundation, I've got all of her blushes, I have two of her highlighters. So basically, I am a Lisa Aldridge expert. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm going to be super analytical and thorough with this review. So this video is going to be a long one. I'm going to go through the different formulas first and then I'll go through the, each palette. Then we'll talk about the packaging, sort of the more nitty gritty detail. With each palette, I do finger swatches, brush swatches, and I compare so many different palettes. I'm also going to do two demo looks for the palette, but for sorcery, I did three. I'm wearing sorcery on my eyes right now. And then I'm going to give you a review of each palette individually before giving you my overall thoughts on this release. I promise this will be the most detailed and comprehensive review you can find on YouTube, so carry on watching. So she's got five different palettes with six shades each. That makes 30 different individual shades. And each of these shades could be one of six different formulas. Essentially, the formulas are divided into two main groups, the mattes and the non mattes. And in the mattes, you have two different finishes. You have the seamless matte or the velvet. And in the non mattes, you have four different finishes. You have the metallic, the luster, the luminous finish, and finally, a top coat finish. So first of all, let's go through the mattes, the velvet formula. According to Lisa, this is a super creamy matte powder. It grips and adheres beautifully to the skin. It's smoothing finish and even coverage. You can apply with finger or brush and it's meant to be smoothing to the skin. So when I was swatching the velvet finish, it has a lot more kickback compared to the seamless matte. And it does feel creamy to the touch for sure. However, I felt like the velvet had less impact in terms of pigment compared to the seamless matte. Also, even though Lisa says that you can apply with a brush, I really found it difficult for the velvet to actually adhere to my skin when I was applying with a brush. And of course, when I did apply with a finger, I was picking up a lot of product. And when I deposited that on the lid, you know, it, do it doesn't look smoothing because at the end of the day, it is a powder and I didn't find it to be smoothing to my skin. I did find it to have a blurring effect when I was using it with a brush, but then of course when I was doing that, I was sacrificing a little bit of the pigment, especially with the lighter shades in the Velvet formula. I really had to keep digging my brush into the pan, apply again, digging into it again, apply again to try to get some kind of payoff on my skin. And I have, you know, pretty fair skin. I'm not super pale, but I'm really not dark at all. All. There are a total of nine shades in a velvet formula. The seamless matte formula. There are a total of seven shades in this formula and Lisa describes this matte formula with a touch of luminosity. She says there was a little bit of pearl in the formulation of this powder matte formula. This shade also feels extremely creamy to the touch and in terms of the luminosity you can definitely see it when you're comparing it to the velvet finish. I also find that the seamless matte has more pigmentation, it applies more easily and I actually prefer the seamless matte formula to the velvet formula. In terms of picking it up with a brush, the seamless matte definitely performs way better than the velvet and it adheres to my lids way better than the velvet as well. Okay, the metallic finishes. So on the website, the metallic finish is a rich, even and smooth shadow and consistently sized dense metallic pearls for the most seamless application. And you can apply with fingers for full opacity for a molten payoff or just a wash of colour with a brush. You can't really get that impactful finish with a brush. So they do apply better with a finger. However, you can use them wet. There are nine shades in the metallic finish. The luster formula. There's only one shade in the luster finish and that's Tafta Fan from the Muse palette. Lisa described this as densely packed, smooth and extra small pearls gives this texture a lustrous pearly finish. The pearls are smaller than the metallic finish. 
and the shade has a pearlized sheen so Tata Fan definitely has this finish like it's very smooth very shiny there's no glitter there's no shimmer it is just like a pearl reflecting back at you it is very pretty and the single shade is out of stock I can personally appreciate the difference between the metallic finish and the luster finish then we have the luminous formula and there are three different shades so Lisa described this as medium payoff, semi-transparent base, light veil of colour for finger application for intense glossy lid or brush for wash of luminosity. And this finish has different size of pearls. Luminous is super creamy. Like when I touch it with my finger, it feels amazing. The only luminous shade that feels a little bit gr gritty is Mercurial from the Sorcery palette. Is that dual chrome shade. But Supernova and Love in Venice just feels uh, like, oh my god, they feel wet when I touch my finger into the pan. And Supernova in particular, I absolutely love. Like, you can see how shiny my fingertips are when I was swatching these three shades. Um, So Mercurial shade, the way that one feels, it feels similar to the Pat McGrath Baked glittery shades but not quite as gritty finally we have the top coat finish Lisa describes this as multicolored sparkling pearls suspended in transparent base and there's a definitely minimal pigment in the base all you get is just like tiny little shimmery particles the shades are ritual and illusionism ritual is in cinnabar illusionism is in the mid palette unfortunately illusionism is out of stock so let's see these shades in action and we'll move on to each individual palette now so let's talk about sorcery first of all because this is the palette that got everyone excited and this is the palette i'm wearing on my eyes right now so this is the palette of the jewel tones it is perfect for those dramatic evening looks or those one and done eye shades unfortunately it is currently out of stock and actually all of the shades individual shades in this palette are out of stock as well just as i note all of the shades in this palette are vegan so if that's something you consider that is good to know so this palette has four metallics one luminous and one seamless matte finish it is the palette with the most metallic shades and the swatches you can see the top is a finger swatch and the bottom is a brush swatch for the matte shades i use a fluffy brush and for the metallic shades i used a flat paddle brush i did find it quite difficult to build up the intensity with the brush so the first shade we've got is troubadour which is a deep inky teal it is vegan and in a seamless matte formula actually with the matte shade troubadour you can see that it's actually still quite pale compared to the finger swatch the second shade i swatched was swan song it is a vegan formula it is metallic it's rich sapphire blue and the next shade is grotto it is the emerald green the next shade i swatched is magical which is the blackened antique green gold so this is also a metallic finish and i think it's got basically a base layer of kind of dark black green and then loads of gold particles the fifth shade i swatched is mage which is another metallic finish it's a pale silvery color but it's got a little bit of green to it it's got a bit of gray to it it's got um actually some blue sparkles that you can see although it is very subtle and actually when it's on the eyes i don't really think you notice it you have to look at your finger pretty closely to notice the different sparkles um but it is a pretty shade and of course the last shade is mercurial it is a, the luminous finish and it is a dual chrome shifting from a green to a violet so that's the shade that i feel like everyone just like basically swooned over i really thought mercurial was going to be dupable because i have quite a big eyeshadow collection and the first thing that came to mind was the color pop glass ball you know like a really affordable dupe but it wasn't it really wasn't as shiny and the dual chrome quality was really different and then i thought about the subliminal palette from pat mcgrath but you know that really pretty dual chrome from her first big mothership palette and again it wasn't like it wasn't quite the same i think the Pat McGrath finish was definitely a little bit more glittery whereas this one was kind of more smooth a little bit more pearlized and this is a shade I have all over my eyes right now and then I thought okay Milky Way from Sydney Grace uh, with the collaboration with Tematalia because I freaking love that shade but even that shade wasn't quite the same and i honestly thought that they would have the same flip so from comparing all of the ones in my collection i do actually think mercurial is a really really beautiful shade 
Okay, let's go into the demos of the shade. First of all, I did a soft day look and I applied mage all over my eyelid with a brush. And I did try to intensify it a little bit when I applied with my finger. As you can see, it did make a difference. Like the middle of my upper eyelid just looked brighter with the finger application. And then I blended Troubadour on my upper lash line. And this was like a super simple daytime look. And it was actually really wearable. And then I did a smokily glittery kind of evening look. Uh, basically what I did there was use Madrigal, the blackened gold shade in my inner corner on my upper eyelid. And then Grotto, the green in the middle of my eyelid. And then Swan Song on the outer third of my eyelid. So it was like a smoky glittery eye in thirds. Um, and all of the shades were super easy to blend together. They are quite creamy. So the different metallic shades are sort of merged together, making a beautiful seamless blend. And then I went in with Troubadour on my lower lash line and a little bit of Mercurial on the inner third of my lower lash line. When you apply it with a brush, it does feel a little bit gritty and it's sort of kind of just applying glitter particles. So I do think it works better with a finger than a brush. However, all of the shades had minimal fallout. Because I only used Mercurial on my lower lash line, I just wanted to see what it would look like if I tap mercurial all over my upper eyelid so I did that and basically that added loads more glitter and shine but obviously I apply that over the metallic shade so you couldn't really see the duochrome however I did do a third look which is the look that I am wearing now just to see how mercurial would perform by itself so I apply mercurial with my finger all over my upper eyelid to really blend it in and kind of get that kind of foiled pearly shine rather than kind of glittery shimmery type of finish. Then I use Grottle the green to line the inner half of my upper lash line and then used Swan Song for the outer half. I left my bottom lash line completely bare and then just applied loads of mascara and this is the look that I came up with. I'm also wearing the Sorcery lipstick. What do you think? And next, let's talk about the comparisons. Compared it with the Pat McGrath Subversive palette because that was the first one that came to mind with the shade Gigabyte. Also, that palette has loads of jewel tones in it. And you can see, although there are some similar shades, it is actually still quite different. But I think you can tell that Pat McGrath actually looks a lot shinier. And I also compared the blue with the subliminal from Pat McGrath. Again, Pat McGrath just has more impact. Another Pat McGrath palette that I compared Sorcery with was the original holiday palette, the Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity, because there were like, like kind of a couple of metallic shades in there. I thought maybe dupable, and there was also a duochrome. But again, it just wasn't the same, really. I compared the palette with a Desi Katie Those of Colors collaboration because I do remember the really beautiful green and blue from that collection. And again, as you can see, the tones are not quite the same, but actually I do think even the Those of Colors metallics were brighter than the Lisa Aldrin metallics. And lastly, I think the palette that has the most similar vibes to Sorcery is the Sigma Enchanted palette. I do have a video on my channel about the Sigma Enchanted palette. And honestly, like I'm not a huge fan of the Sigma formula, um, especially the evergreen matte, the dark green matte. I found it really difficult to pack on color and blend out. But the shade Metamorphosis is like quite similar to Mercurial and we have Cosmos and Electrum in there which are all really nice dupes of the Sorcery palette and obviously the Sigma is a, a little bit cheaper and you get a lot more shades. So in summary what do I think of this particular palette? Well if you're buying this palette for super sparkly shades, for that stunner shade, for that one and done shade, as you can see from my comparisons actually other brands do do it better. So if you're a huge eyeshadow fanatic and like collecting eyeshadows, I don't think you will like this palette. However, if you're someone who's just sort of starting to dive at their toe in a water of colourful shades, then this is good for you because it's not overpowering. It's not like you put glitter on your eyes and then suddenly you don't know what to do and then you, you wipe it off because even though it is shiny and metallics it is definitely more wearable because it's not 
that bright does that make sense but with a shade of mercurial i do think this shade is really special and worth picking up when it's back in stock probably just as a single pan because even for a big collector like me i couldn't find something that was exactly the same a lot of things with similar vibes but not really the same and it is really beautiful shade and i really like how it looks on my eyes um if you're thinking of like another shade that i recommend in this palette is the shade madrigal the kind of the gold shade i do have a lot of golds in my collection but none with quite a deep black base like this so if you're into a more subtle gold with a kind of like a more obvious base color so that you're not intimidated by putting just like liquid gold on your eyelids then that's quite a good shade to have as well okay next let's move on and talk about the palette myth which is the purple cat palette so a palette has a mixture of warm and cool undertones and on her website she said you can create clouds of color kind of type of looks this palette has four velvets, one metallic and one top coat. So this is actually the palette with the most number of the velvet formula. The first shade I swatched was Mauve Decade, which is a velvet formula. It is a muted grey lavender shade. And then we have Victorian Trim, which is velvet and is rich and bright, vibrant mulberry. Violet Stone, it's just this pure violet shade, has kind of a mid tone brightness to it. Then we've got the darkest matte in this palette, which is called Nocturama. It is a deep black and violet. And in the pan, it definitely just looks like a black to me. But when I swatch it, you can see that purple tone. We have Illusionism, which is a top coat. So this is the one with a transparent base and it's got kind of pink sparkles in it. Finally, we've got Faded Amethyst, which is the only vegan formula in this palette. It's metallic and it's a smoked and lustrous taupe amethyst. So again, I did two different looks with this palette, one soft day look and one more dramatic look. For the soft day look, I just used Mauve Decade all over my lid and I tried to use Nocturama to define my lash line a little bit but i found it quite difficult to apply on my eyelid i used this kind of soft tapered pencil brush shape it was the zoewa smoky liner 320 brush and i just found it really difficult to put the color on my eyelid to give it some sort of impact and just to remind you, the Dr. Rama shade is in the velvet finish. Um, and then I went in with Illusionism to top coat all over my eyelid. And this applied perfectly fine with a finger. I didn't use this with a brush because as you can see from the swatch that I've done, it just doesn't pick up with a brush. It doesn't deposit any pigment. The other look that I created was a purple halo eye. So I use Victoria Trim, the really bright mauve to start off with, then deepen the halo with Violet Stone and Nocturama. So Nocturama was a little bit easier to apply with a slightly different brush, but it's kind of annoying knowing that I can't use the brush that I want to use for the color because it just doesn't work. And then finally, I went in with Faded Amethyst in the center for that pop. And of course, I compared this palette to two purple palettes that I owned. And the first one was one of the Vizia Fury palette. This is the one called Amethyst. And as you can see, there are definitely similarities, but the brightness that you get with the Myth palette definitely doesn't show up in the Vizia palette. And I also have the palette by Kevin Oquan, the nude pop palette. This is one of my favorite cool tone purple palettes. There are definitely similarities, but it misses the brightness. But what I found on the finger swatches was that the Kevin O'Quan matte swatch so much better on the on the back of my hand. So is this one worth picking up? Well, <laughs> I already stressed about how annoying it was to use the shade at Nocturama in the way that I wanted it. Another thing that I didn't like was the Mauve Decade doesn't have very much pigment 
it might be something that you enjoy having a really soft sort of wash of color for me with mauve decade i wish there was a little bit more pigment because i had to keep swiping and swiping and swiping to kind of get that like purpley gray to show up on my eyelid and i really wanted the color to show up because it is such a pretty color so if you're someone with a dark skin tone i mean the shade mauve decade is just not going to do anything for you because it's not pigmented enough i really do love a purple palette as well so i'm kind of annoyed that a couple of the shades don't really work for me victorian trim and violet stone are really pretty colors and they worked really well i have no complaints about them and illusionism again is a beautiful top coat fade and amethyst is the metallic formula but i feel like this shade just the like the shine faded after a while um it was really shiny straight after i applied it but i feel like 10 minutes later i look at my eye and it just wasn't as shiny anymore so the standout shades from this palette it is definitely this shade here victorian trim because i can't find anything quite this tone in my collection and is this really beautiful bright mulberry color and another shade that i do like is illusionism which is a top coat i don't think illusionism is unique by any means but i do really quite like it so the muse palette is the rosy warm brown tones palette it is super variable interestingly mine the shades came arranged in the wrong order i don't really know why but i rearranged them that was kind of strange so the Muse palette has three velvets, one metallic, one luminous, and one luster finish. So the first shade I swatched is Tea Room, which is a velvet finish, and it's a soft pink apricot. Then the shade I swatched was the Cherubim, another velvet, is a muted clay pink. And the third one was Vintage Mulberry, which is a velvet deep plum brown. I swatched Taffeta Fan, which is a vegan formula. It is the only luster finish she has in her entire collection and it is a delicate pearly champagne. It's just a classic champagne shade. Then I swatched Love in Menace, which is a luminous finish and is a rose gold. Then finally, we have the darkest metallic shade, which is Tomorrow's Party, which is also vegan and is a burnished warm rose. So for this palette, the first soft look I created was actually a kind of a matte halo eye. I used a tea room in the outer inner corner, then cherubim to deepen it up, and then vintage mulberry to try to give it more depth. Then I used taffeta fan in the middle. The three velvet shades definitely just kind of like blended into themselves. But the shade Tea Room, I did have to really pack it on to try to get that pink apricot colour to come alive on my eyes. It's the same problem that I had with Mauve Decade from the Myth palette. So, and with the second look, I first put Tomorrow's Party all over my eyes, then Love in Venice in the inner corner. Um, then I use a cherubim, the velvet, in the outer corner of my eye and try to deepen that outer corner with mulberry, vintage mulberry as well from the palette. So I feel like I tried my best to give the looks as much depth as possible, but the shade vintage mulberry, although it looks quite dark in the pan or looks like a deep enough brown it really doesn't come off like that on the eyes the shade is like a couple shades lighter when it's actually on your eyelid so i don't think this palette gives you enough depth the vibe of the muse palette reminded me of the pat mcgrath divine rose palette the first one that came out because it's got kind of a similar soft rosy hues right when you actually swatch the shades they don't look that similar Divine Rose has shades that are a little bit more cool toned, a little bit more mauvey. And the next obvious one was Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Eye Palette. And as you can see from my swatches, the tones are definitely very similar between the two. Although I guess Muse just gives you a touch more depth. But obviously the Pillow Talk only has four shades, but I feel like the looks that you create with Pillow Talk will probably end up looking the same as the looks you create with the Muse palette. So if you already have this one, I don't think you need this one. The other palette that I thought probably has similar shades was the Pat McGrath Mothership Mega Celestial Honesty palette. 
I know that there are like loads of greens and like purples and golds in this palette but when you just pick out the pinky browns the shades actually do look a little bit similar the sort of pinky brownie palette that i have in my collection is the natasha denona star palette i'm not sure if you can still get this anymore to be honest but this palette does have quite a few of the browns and tones and i compare some shades together but you know with a star palette you get a lot more depth and a lot of different variety so i mean i personally prefer the star palette <laughs> if i wasn't on the mission to review all of these palettes to review all of the shades this is one i would have given a miss on but because of like trying to review stuff for you guys and really wanting to do a full analytical comprehensive view i picked up this palette also i feel like even though i did two different looks they ended up looking so similar i used different shades i placed the shades in different parts of my eye but then when i looked into the mirror i felt like they were very very similar looks and that's because this palette is very very cohesive in its tones and its color so for me that's kind of like a downside because i like to play cre create experiment but for someone again like you know like a beginner someone who just want to spend five minutes on their eyeshadow that doesn't want to think about what color she's going to put on her eyes then this palette actually is amazing for that so if you're medium skin toned this palette is like a no-no for you i really do think that because you just won't get the depth or the color payoff from the velvets and in terms of the metallics really i you know they're nothing unique to be honest and now we have the cinnabar palette this is you know that classic brown palette that i feel like everyone probably already has so this palette has two seamless mattes one velvet two metallics and one top coat it's probably the palette that has most of the formulas raw sienna is vegan is seamless matte is a light caramel color we have the shade deep ochre which is a velvet it's a rich earthy brown the third shade is fired earth which is also vegan is in a seamless matte formula and is a deep warm earth brown then we come to the top coat shade which is ritual it is one with a clear base and just some soft light gold warm sparkling shimmers then we have the metallic shade called bronzite vegan formula it is a rich warm bronze finally we have a shade lost summer which is also vegan in a metallic finish and it is a warm copper shade you can see from the demonstration that again the brush swatch is just less pigmented but the way that the shades applied with a brush you can see that it sort of blends by itself and with the metallic shades although you can get that same intensity you do have to dig your brush into the pan quite a bit so same thing again two different looks for a soft look i use raw sienna all over my eyelid and i use a fire earth to define my lash line and then i just popped ritual all over the top again ritual that top coat shade similar to illusionism is very pretty i have no complaints it is a true top coat because there is no base color to it and then i started using the other shades for the bold look i started off with bronzite all over my lid and then using deep ochre and fired earth on the outer corners of my to deepen uh, i also used lost summer on the lower lash line just to see what that copper would look like and lastly i put ritual in my inner corner so the first palette that popped into my head when thinking about comparison with cinnabar is another viseart theory palette and this one is in the shade minx doesn't it just scream cinnabar obviously the shades in here are very very similar to cinnabar but you don't get that pretty sparkly top coat to be honest i don't even know if these viseart palettes are still available and this shade here is absolutely stunning another palette that came to mind for me was charlotte tilbury queen of 
glow quad i thought that this palette would re look really similar to cinnabar but actually the matte shade in the charlotte tilbury palette has a really obvious purple undertone which is very different to the browns mattes in the cinnabar palette and with the shimmers again i feel like they give out off that different vibe but none of the shades is actually an exact dupe and another comparison that I thought of was Bronze Seduction by Pup McGrath because of the warm brown tones. However, the browns actually are not quite the same and even that bronzy shade in the Pat McGrath palette is more gold than brown. So that's quite interesting. So I also got Pat McGrath Midnight Sun out for mainly for shits and giggles because I didn't really think these two will look similar but actually the browns look almost identical when swatched on the back of my hand and of course with the midnight sun palette you have these beautiful sparkly shades and honestly that copper shade from midnight sun palette makes the lisa aldridge metallic look like a matte but obviously the two have very different formulas one is baked one is much more gritty less creamy so that's based on personal preference whether you like something that is super shiny or you just want something a little bit more subtle and of course i had to compare cinnabar with the il maquillage and kathleen lights collaboration i have a review of this palette on my channel as well please go check it out so i didn't give this palette a very positive review because i feel like i was being advertised this diamondy top coat that i didn't get i have a much truer top coat shade from the lisa aldridge collection so the mattes from the il maquillage palette are basically identical to cinnabar and the uh, top top coat shades from the Il Maquillage palette actually looks a lot more metallic compared to Lisa Eldridge and obviously we have to compare it to Natasha Denona Bieber palette like obviously so the browns the matte browns obviously in the Bieber palette because there are more shades there are just more variations um none of them I think is an exact dupe to the browns in the Cinnabar palette and neither are the metallics so if you're someone who really likes her mattes, then the Bieber palette is definitely better for you. However, if you enjoy metallics and really want that shimmery top coat, then Cinnabar would be a better choice. I mean, I really don't have any complaints with this palette, to be honest. Is it anything special? Is it anything unique? No, of course not. We've had so many different iterations of a bronze brown, brown palette, but I do feel like the mattes in this palette particularly perform really well and you do get variations of depth. Although like, you know, like the other palettes, if you are dark skin toned, the light color won't work that well for you. But compared to the light colors in Myth and Muse, Raw Sienna actually show up on my lid pretty easily. So I do like that. And the shade Bronzite obviously is that really beautiful br bronze. You probably have already in your collection, but if you don't, then you're not going to go wrong with this, to be honest. And finally, you do get a little top coat shade in this palette as well. And I really, really like the top coat shade from Lisa's formula. It's super easy to apply with a finger and you get that sparkly finish that is sophisticated and elegant, not glittery. It's just pretty shimmers dancing in the light. Last but not least, we have vega oh my god we're onto the last palette so this is the cool and neutral tone palette it's got gray so it's got this one neutral brown and it's got a couple of metallic -y shades as well so there's one velvet three seamless mattes one metallic and one luminous so the first shade is a french gray this is the velvet formula it is vegan is a light neutral stone then we have the shade Turbulence, so that is the seamless matte, it is the cool medium brown and is also vegan. Then I swatch Smoked and Mirrors, again vegan, seamless matte, is a medium deep cool grey slate. And finally we have Lamp Black, which is a seamless matte and it is a true black shade. Then we've got Moonswell, Moonswell is a beautiful shade, it is metallic, it is a cool silvery mink toe then finally we have the last shade supernova it is vegan it is in the, in the luminous formula it is silver with rose pink and silver sparkles and supernova for sure is gorgeous and stunning 
So in terms of the demo for the first look, soft day look, I used French grey all over. And again, so this is the lightest matte in the palette and I have trouble with all of her light mattes except for Sienna in her palette. I just, it's difficult to get the colour to show up and since it is the velvet formula, it doesn't pick very it doesn't pick up on a brush very well it doesn't deposit the color very well then i used moon swirl in the lash line it didn't really work with a dry brush but then i wet the brush and it just picked up the color so much better i had so much more impact and i was much happier and then i used smoke and mirrors in the outer corner and lower lash line for the bold look i use turbulence and lamp black as a halo eye base um, turbulence applied very easily, same as Lamp Black, and I think that's because they're in a seamless matte formula. Then I used Supernova with my finger and applied it in the middle. And then for the lower lash line, I just mirrored what I did on the top and applied Supernova again to the bottom lash line. Honestly, I love the Supernova shade, it's so pretty. One of the palettes I definitely had to compare Vega with is the Colourpop That's a Taupe palette. I got this palette when the Natasha Denona Glam palette came out and I didn't want to spend more money on the Natasha Denona palette so I got this instead. Comparing it to the Vega, the matte shades are definitely different. Vega has that grey, bluey, dark shades that the Colourpop I think probably just can't formulate very well. And in terms of the metallic the color pop palette, it's got very similar tone to Lisa Eldridge, but Moonswell is definitely shinier. And uh, we do have one of the Super Shark formulas. So the Super Shark formula outperforms Supernova, but the Super Shark formula has more glitter, whereas the Supernova shade, it's much more smooth and has more of that pearl finish. So I do have this random Seattle London eyeshadow palette. It's called the Editor palette and it's got some kind of cool tones to it. So I thought it would be interesting to compare it to Vega. By the way, I do have a video on my channel, which is a full face of Seattle London. So go check it out and you'll find out how I feel about this palette. So I did compare the shades. I feel like actually I did swatch four different mattes on, my, on the back of my hand, but I feel like two of them look completely identical. And in terms of the shimmers, they're on the exact dupes and they don't, I mean, they're kind of on par with Lisa Eldridge, maybe a little bit less shiny, but it has sort of similar vibes, especially with mattes. But I do think that the Lisa Eldridge matte formula is better than the Ciate. And the last comparison is with Pat McGrath's Subliminal Palette and Vega because this is also a cool tone palette. And although they give off similar vibes, there definitely aren't exact dupes of the shades other than the black because both palettes have a black. <laughs> So I really, really love this palette, um, except the shade French Grey because it takes a while to show up on my eyes. It does show up better if I apply it with a finger. I don't like applying eyeshadows with my finger because I can't be as precise. So I really like using a brush and it kind of really annoys me that I can't get this exact shape in the pan on my eyes. However, the other shades in the palette are absolutely stunning. Like like I said, I love Supernova. Moonswirl is super gorgeous as well. And the black does perform well. Also, I feel like generally I just don't have that many cool toned eyeshadows. So even if I wasn't doing this video for the channel, I would have picked up this palette. And if you're someone who doesn't have cool toned eyeshadows already, then I really, really recommend this. Smoke and Mirrors is such a unique shade as well. It's this medium cool grey shade, but it almost looks blue. And I don't have anything like this in my collection. The single pan for Smoke and Mirrors is still available as well. Uh, I just really think this is such a unique shade and it performs well on my eyes. It's easy to pick up. So I really recommend getting it. If you're not interested in this palette, but you're like cool, cool tone shades, or you're looking to collect cool tone shades, I recommend getting Smoke and Mirrors as a single. 
Um, so, I mean, there are loads of Lisa Aldridge videos out there already, so maybe some of this you all know already, but let's quickly just talk through the packaging concept. So all of the palettes come in this white box with a gold handwriting, her logo, which is in the exact same theme as her lipsticks and all of her other products. And then at the back, you can see the ingredients, the different shadings, the finishes. All of the palettes have a 24 month shelf life and all of them are made in Italy. The net weight of the product is 5.4 grams, which means each individual eyeshadow is about 0.9 grams. And just as a comparison, the Charlotte Tilbury Quartz net weight is 5.2 grams, so each shade is 1.3 grams. And in terms of a Pat McGrath quad, the net weight is 4.5, so each shade is 1.25. So the palette does feel nicely weighted, it is quite slim. It's not something that you'll be embarrassed to crack out and, you know, look at yourself in a mirror with. It does feel heavy, but it doesn't feel as heavy as I expect it to. I'm not really sure what material this is made out of. I can't see it on the packaging either. There is a really nice, good quality mirror in the palette. Each palette comes with this little plastic cover that you can put on there to try to keep your mirror clean and of course the back also has the shade names the palette name and the, the, the finish of the shade as well it does stand up by itself here so it's very easy for you to use this as a mirror while you're doing your makeup in terms of opening the palette you do have to um kind of put your fingernail in there to lift it open but it doesn't take very much force at all the magnet is really not very strong and it definitely closes better without the plastic there you can hear that click but when you have the plastic covering the shades to protect the mirror is is not as great of a closure so i do think you can't just drop it in your handbag it will definitely open up by itself so each palette is 49 pounds but each single shade is 11 pounds so if you were to get six shades it is 66 pounds whereas if you just get the palette then that is a 17 pounds difference however at the moment you cannot just buy an empty palette and buy individuals to customize it but obviously if you do it that way it is less cost effective so the shadows are super easy to pop out i just have this like super thin cotton bud from um, my kitco and you just push it through and here you go it lifts up so interestingly this one was actually glued i haven't popped up each eyeshadow obviously but you can see actually a spot of glue in this palette this is a cinnabar palette isn't that so weird? I did pop up some shades from the Vega palette and none of the shades were glued in that palette. So I don't know why some of the shades were glued down in the Cinnabar palette. Another thing I noticed is the back of the each, each pan is actually different. So can you see the top one has like those little dots and the perforated middle and the bottom one is just a normal metallic pan i did a little bit of digging around in my palette and the reason why the back of the pan is different is because it's different for the different formulas with the velvet and the luminous formula it looks like your typical metallic pan but with the metallic luster seamless matte and top coat finish it's got that weird like bumpy and then like the hole in the middle so i guess it's because they're produced by different factories and which might also be why my muse palette came arranged not according to the back of the packaging and why the cinema palette has shades that are glued down um but obviously having shades that are glued down is kind of defeating the point because you are supposed to pop it out it's supposed to be magnetic so Lisa does say that all of her products are cruelty free from microplastics and talc. So if you are someone who's looking to build their own customized palette, you know, you don't have to buy the gold palette. You can just buy each individual pan and pop it into a normal Z palette. I did try that earlier and it works absolutely fine. It's really not a problem. Um, but obviously if you want this 
packaging this particular gold palette um at the moment you do have to fork out for nine pounds to get palette and six shades and you can get some additional shades if there are any shades that you're interested in you can just rewind back to the other parts of my video and decide which shades you do want to get however quite a few of them are out of stock on her website already they sold out super fast but obviously you can save this video and come back to it when the, the shades and the palettes are restocked to help you decide. So I do have a, a, a small bone to pick with Lisa from this ordering experience because I ordered seven minutes after launch. Literally my order confirmation email arrived at 16.07 and I did not get my order until today, Monday the 21st of November. So it was a whole week that elapsed and I don't even know if I would have gotten my order on Monday if I didn't reach out to a customer service team. Obviously, if I was just a normal consumer, like I wouldn't care, I would just wait. But it is still a little bit annoying because if you place your order within 10 minutes of launch and then got it after loads of other people who placed it later, it, it's like that that would be annoying right i mean i wouldn't have reached out to a customer service team if i wasn't planning on making this video and i was kind of slightly disheartened when i saw everyone else's video coming on youtube and i'm just like wondering to myself does my one even matter would people even watch this i mean i don't know how many people are going to watch this but i've recorded it now i spent all day doing it um <laughs> so and when I reached out to the customer service team by email first, they just replied with, oh, at least it's on the news I tell you, it will ship out from Monday the 14th of November and all of the orders will ship out by Wednesday the 23rd of November. Then I reached out via Instagram as well and um, had the same reply. Then I wrote back saying, well, like I get it, but you know, I placed mine really early. And then she said, oh, she checked it for me and said everything's ready to ship, hang on tight, but then couple days later nothing shipped so then I reached out by email again saying you know I'm just a little bit disappointed and upset because you know I, I it was such a big order I placed it so early why it hasn't it shipped and I'm not trying to be whining about it but I hope you can see why I'm annoyed um I mean mainly because I want to make YouTube videos on it but then she said okay sorry about that we'll um, make sure your order now says urgent so it would be shipped out as soon as possible then i think it was later that evening i had a notification notification saying that it's been shipped um i just i never had this much trouble with getting her products and one of the explanations i got on instagram was something about one of the eyeshadows like not like being not being quite available and like there's high demand etc etc and um yeah <sighs> I mean, I, I do think that's true, but yeah, I was still a little bit annoyed by it and I've not had a bad experience with shipping with Lisa Eldridge, um, except for the like the first couple times when she was doing pre-orders and I had to wait for ages. And I think her first launch, she did have a problem with her provider. But anyway, I was a little bit disappointed with this one. Okay, so my overall thoughts and the big question should you splurge on these palettes? Should you buy it? Are they worth it? What's the hype all about? Okay, right. So Lisa Aldridge is a really seasoned makeup artist. She's got loads of experience behind her. And her experience is not just in applying makeup. She's got experience in product design, creative direction. You know, she was like the creative director of Lancome or perhaps still is the creative director of Lancome. She knows makeup history and takes inf inspiration from different time periods. And the way she describes makeup reflects that, re reflects her experience, it reflects her knowledge. It makes you feel that the product is so much more than just little particles in a metal container. Therefore, it is really easy to fall prey to buying what you don't need or spending much more than you want to. So I'm sort of here to ground you really because I need someone to ground me as well a lot of the time because at the end of the day, it is just makeup, it's just eyeshadow. And that might not be how you look at it. You might be a collector, you might think it's a piece of art, but I think the way I consume makeup, um, I do think of it as just makeup and you can have all of the pretty packaging and you know that I think that makes the user experience more pleasant but at the end of the day it all goes on my eyes right 
and I really like buying eyeshadow to use and create looks and I find it as a source of relaxation and creative outlet. So I'm not really buying into the story or the marketing techniques. Um, obviously, if you're a huge fan of Lisa Eldridge and want to, you know, collect them all, then sure, by all means. But if you consume makeup the way that I do, um, I definitely don't think you need all of these palettes. Um, there are definitely standout shades, like I've mentioned throughout the video before this. Also, in particular, if you're the type of consumer who doesn't experiment very much with makeup, loves soft finishes, and also maybe you're someone who, you know, actually uses a palette religiously, hits pan and needs a refill, then like these are, you know, perfect. Then you're that customer that Lisa Aldridge is making her products for. I do think Lisa's customer base is probably someone ranging from their late 20s to even, you know, like 60s, 70s base, and someone with some spending power. Uh, the these eyeshadow palettes in particular are for someone who's into more subtle makeup and sophisticated and elegant makeup and finishes. If you're an eyeshadow collector, if you're an eyeshadow connoisseur and you love shine, glitz, glamour, glitter, then you will be disappointed by these formulas. As you have seen from my comparison videos, the metallic and shine, like, that definitely pales in comparison when you compare it to Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona. And I do feel like, you know, that's okay. Not everything has to be super shiny and super sparkly. Different people prefer different finishes. And, you know, like I said with the Muse palette, it, this colour story is so cohesive that you can't go wrong. It is so easy. It is extremely beginner friendly. And you know, you might be a working professional and who secretly loves makeup but can't wear her glitter to work because, you know, you'll be self-conscious and maybe people will tell you off. But then with these eyeshadow palettes, it sort of makes it possible because it's sophisticated, it's elegant. So at the end of the day, you know, think about what type of customer you are and decide whether you want to pick any of these up. But just as a reminder, the shades that I really like from the collection is Supernova and Smoke and Mirrors from Vega, Mercurial from Sorcery, also Victoria Trim, Violet Stone and Illusionism from the Myth Palette. And I also love the top coat shade Ritual from Cinnabar. So if you enjoyed this video and overall this type of content, I hope you'll subscribe and keep a watch out for my lipstick video. I I really enjoy doing product reviews and because it allows me to be really analytical I really want to dive deep into the product details and I think I enjoy being analytical because of my scientific background. I wish I could review every new release for you but I don't want to buy them all. I just like you know I want to stay grounded so I also enjoy making content from a creativity point of view and also from a teaching point of view. So I hope you'll subscribe for that too. So in the meantime, you can check out my Lisa Aldridge playlist or you wait for that new lipstick video that will come up. Some of these um, videos are pretty lo-fi um, because, you know, I'm still very new to YouTube and I'm kind of learning with every video to try to get better. But anyway, thank you for watching and bye.